సహనవ్ బునత్తు వాట్ ఎవర్ వీ హ్యావ్ ఇన్ ద వరల్డ్ వీ హ్యావ్ టు షేర్ విత్ ఎవ్రీబడి వేర్ ఎవర్ దేర్ ఈస్ నో ఫుడ్ వీ హ్యావ్ టు షేర్ వేర్ ఎవర్ దేర్ ఈస్ ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ వీ హ్యావ్ టు షేర్ వాట్ ఎవర్ వీ హ్యావ్ నాలెడ్జ్ లవ్ పీస్ హౌ మనీ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ థింగ్స్ వీ హ్యావ్ టు షేర్ విత్ ద వరల్డ్ సహవీర్యం కరమ వహై లెట్ ఆల్ ద వరల్డ్ టుగెదర్ వీ హ్యావ్ టు ట్రావెల్ ఇన్ ద పాత్ ఆఫ్ ట్రూత్ టు అటైన్ పీస్ Her birth was prophesied by Ramana Maharshi. In fact, it was it was he that told Amma's mother that she'd give birth to Tai, which means the divine mother, and she would help uplift humanity. And true to that prophecy, uh Amma was born in 1958 on the most holy day of the Hindu calendar, a day known as Vijaya Dashami. It's a day that celebrates the victory of the divine mother over ignorance and darkness. After Amma's birth she exhibited compassion and selflessness uncharacteristic of a young person in fact she uh gained the nickname Karunami when she went to Varanasi to merge her uh grandparents ashes into the Ganges and there was a man that was shivering there and she offered her shawl to him at a very young age and and he said uh you know Amma you're like a Karunami uh means the compassionate one and she began spending more and more time in meditation and less interest in the external world and finally in her early 20s she locked herself in her family's prayer room and remained there for over 1 month at the conclusion of that 1 month period when ama came out of the prayer room everyone could still feel her love and compassion but they noticed that she was definitely completely disconnected from the external world and from the phenomenal existence Shortly after that Amma left the safety and security of her family's home and traveled on foot to a remote forest known as Penusla Kshetram where Amma would spend the next 10 years immersed in deep meditation. She would wake up early in the morning, take a bath in the river and then sit in meditation in different locations for as long as a day, two days, weeks, even months at a time. And when Amma concluded this external period, which happened gradually, she began her external mission of alleviating the suffering from humanity and healing the human heart just doing prayers and meditation is not enough we have to open our heart more towards compassion love wisdom and see god in all the beings also under privileged people are my god very soon after ama emerged from the penusila forest after doing her tapas or austerity she went into immediate action serving the underprivileged communities throughout the world her organization produced a video that shows the extent of her programs and i've been to these parts of india to see them in action Unfortunately, there are many South Indian villagers who don't have easy access to clean water, and in Andhra Pradesh, they were using these extremely old wells with jagged, dangerous steps. Not only was it difficult to obtain the water, the villagers were suffering from the various effects of fluoride poisoning due to contaminated water reaching excess fluoride levels. They tested the water and it was 25 times the amount considered safe for human consumption. This water was making people extremely ill and children were being born with severe mental and physical disabilities. In 2010, the SMVA Trust was able to initiate a large and ongoing clean sustainable water project 
to provide water treatment plants to local villages. Each water treatment plant provides clean water for as many as 2,000 families. In the same region of Andhra Pradesh, many people lack proper shelter. They live in simple huts made of mud that get destroyed constantly, especially during the monsoon rain season. In coordination with her nonprofit, the SMVA Trust, Ama has set up an elaborate free sustainable housing project that has given over 200 homes to families in need. In addition to her housing and water projects, she has also set up free education for rural villagers. Currently there's two free tribal schools and she began free education as a means to put a permanent end to child labor because unfortunately the people that live in that region from as early as the ages of five or six, they can begin working in rice paddies or making building materials, hauling uh, blocks under the very hot uh, South Indian sun and there's never really any hope for them. Without education, they're destined to repeat this and the next generation would also be plagued by the vicious cycle of child labor. In addition to providing uh, free schooling, Alma also began a hospital in the year 2002 to provide medical care for a region that serves about 500,000 villagers, all of whom never had proper sanitary uh, medical care before that. The hospital uh, features uh, physiotherapy, gynecology, dentistry, cardiology, optometry, and of course all the care they receive, all of the treatment, the medicines, everything is given completely free of cost, regardless, like with all of Alma's charities, regardless of your religion or your gender, your social status. Love, what is love? We love people, no? Oh, I love you so much, okay. But this love is only for one or two people. But what Sanatana Dharma mentioned, Love the total universe like God. Because Iswara Sarva Bhutanam. Where is God? God is all pervading. God is all forms. Billions, trillions of forms are God forms only. All the trillions of forms are nothing but one form only. From that one form, all these forms come. She's revered in India as an incarnation of the Divine Mother. And so a lot of us in the West, um, we're not really familiar with the concept of an avatar or a pure incarnation of divinity. But basically, it's when consciousness itself manifests in a form that's completely aware of itself. So in some philosophies, they'd say that we're all divine beings, we're all um, embodiments of the divine but we're not aware of it and we have to become aware of it and that's kind of the whole process of the various religions of the world is, is how do we make our journey back to where we already are and, and that's not separate from from the God or divinity the universe so uh, Amma is is that she's an incarnation of the divine she's an avatar she is someone for whom there's no duality meaning that she never sees herself separate from the rest of creation, for every one of us. I think Amma is called a mother and a universal mother because she so genuinely and deeply loves all of creation. It's not just every human being that's on the planet, and you will see it in all of their shapes and sizes, no matter what their behavior is, from the highest to the lowest. She shows such tenderness, such concern and compassion, and wants to take away the suffering and the ignorance of every single being on the planet. I'm not this body, I'm not this mind, I'm not this uh, limited intellect. I feel the total world is my family. I never discreet anybody is separation from me. Uh, so I feel all of you in my Atman, uh, my Supreme Self. I know who I am. Amma really stands for three things. It's loving, giving and serving. And that love, give and serve in Amma's mission is beyond any barriers of 
caste, creed, religion, denomination, gender. She's the mother and as a mother what she does is, you know, encourages, enhances what is inherently within us to connect naturally to what we are already aware of and what we can already be connected to. <laughs> and so many times that Amma might answer their questions that they're just having inside their hearts. She might uh, give them something that they need even though they don't ask for it verbally or physically. And that is, is a unique characteristic of Amma. She's, she's our mother. She's everyone's mother. And it's difficult to even grasp or put in words how someone could constantly have an intimate relationship with everyone that's alive. We can't really compre comprehend anything like that. But that's simply who she is. She doesn't ask to be thought of as a divine mother or even as a guru or, a, or anything like that, but simply as our own near and dear mum. From uh, my personal point of view, um, I am actually a disciple of Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba and um, he has actually transformed my life from uh, being who I was to who I am, a cocoon and hopefully to a butterfly that's actually stretching its wings. The beauty about Amma, as I already mentioned, is she absolutely doesn't interfere with my devotion to Bhagawan Sri Baba and my association with him for the few decades that I have been with him. As a matter of fact, my love for Swami and my engagement with him, the divine indweller, has magnified immensely after I have come to Amma. As I mentioned, she's a loving mother. She is not my guru, she is my mother. And as a mother, what she does is nurtures and nourishes my spirit, which is already connected to Bhagawan Baba. When you're in Amma's presence, you feel incredibly inspired to help. You realize that you were born with two hands and two feet, and whether you feel gifted or not, there is so much need out there. There are so many opportunities to help people. I would encourage everyone to take the time to come and see Amma, wherever she is, even if you've come from a different religion or a different background, she's not interested in changing anyone's faith. It has nothing to do with religion. It completely transcends that. But she's simply here to love us unconditionally, to hold us and to inspire us to realize our full potential, to realize and to awaken to what we already are and that is what she refers to every time she starts a discourse as the embodiment of divinity. And she does say, embodiment of divine souls, because she sees that in us. Don't thank me, children. Don't thank me any time. This is my responsibility to love you, to come and see you. I love you so much like anything. I have actually no work in the world. You are my project, no other projects for me. <laughs> Every individual is my project. I love you, it's so beautiful. Amma is one of those very rare souls who you might get a chance to see on this planet actually walking her talk. There's so many people who are caring and loving individuals who will speak in a very inspired way, but if you examine their life, you don't see that they are living from their mighty principles. If you were to follow a day in the life of Amma, it would be one of the most exhausting days of your entire life. Amma sleeps very little, she eats very little, and she dedicates her entire life, every moment of her life, to removing the suffering on this planet. I love this world so much. The world is nothing but Iswaraha Sarva Bhutanam. Where is God? God is all-pervading. The total creation is God's creation. 
Oceans are God's creation. We have to love ocean. We have to love rivers. We have to love the mountains, snow mountains. All the mountains are God's creation. All the birds kingdom is God's creation. Flower kingdom is God's creation. Total creation is nothing but comes from the absolute consciousness only. If you respect really God, you are able to respect all the creation also. So that's why we must not fight with each other. We have to love each other, respect all the faiths. We have to bring more harmony, love in the society. I am expecting from the bottom of my heart total universal peace and progress for the world. Om Shanti 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 Namaste. Namaste.